Hi, hi everybody. Okay, I thought I'd better do a quick um, video before Christmas because it's been ages. I've just been really busy. God, so much stuff to do. I'm making, well, you can't see them, but I'm still making beakers and oh, I don't know. It's manic at the moment. A lot to get done, but I thought I'd quickly wanted to show you. Do you remember, like, I don't know if you watched the one where we did the double, um, the double walled pots well this is the one that i actually um demonstrated in the video so it's been fired now and um i think when i made it it was just like a buff colored clay yeah so what i did is i put a black slip an ordinary black slip on it um when it was leather hard so that when it comes out the bisque fire okay it's gonna come out i mean i know it looks gray but with um with a glaze over the top that, that would be really black okay so this is, I think it's advertised as Raven Black Slip. Um, anyway, so yeah, apply the slip when it's leather hard. And the reason that I wanted to make them black, and this is another, another big one that I did with the black slip on as well. And um, the reason is that I knew that I wanted to put vitreous slips on or underglazes on afterwards and kind of wipe them back. Because like there's loads of um, black clays that you can buy but they're really expensive. I mean, honestly, they cost loads. <coughs> and um, and actually, like, why do you, you know, why do you need to buy a black clay when sometimes you can fake it till you make it, you see, with a black slip? So you can just, um, I mean, it kind of depends what you want to do with your, with your work, obviously, but I just knew that I wanted to layer up um, underglazes and sponge them back to black okay and if i hadn't applied the black slip at leather hard and then had it bisque fired like i would be sponging back to you know the buff clay that it is you know that i made it out of yeah so it would actually have been that color right so i didn't want to be sponging back to buff i wanted to be sponging back to black so that's a good way of faking um having black clay you know you don't need to always buy black expensive black clay like you can just you can just coat it in black slip and that's fine job done so these are some examples of um kind of wiping slip back to like a black color okay do you see what i mean so so you get this lovely kind of really black dark kind of effect coming through can you see and that's just got like a pale vitreous slip over the top there. But that was the same. I mean, these were just terracotta dishes um, with a black slip applied at leather hard, um, you know, and everything's been sort of done on top of the black, all right? But this one particularly, because it's been wiped back. That one actually, I think, I can't remember how I made it now. I think I just painted it onto the black. But anyway, I just want to quickly show you. So, um, so we've got our bisque fired pot and I've just decided that I'm going to do um, a couple of layers. I've got some really old underglaze that I made ages ago and they've started to go a bit, they're a bit minging, they've started going a bit mouldy and funny, it's probably going to stink. I've given it a good shake, oops, actually it's not too bad, it's not too bad. So this is herb green, so I'm just going to basically coat this all over, okay, with the underglaze. Cause, and you can just really slap it on because because basically it doesn't need to be like this perfect um, you know layer of of underglaze because you're you're basically going to be sponging a lot of it off okay so just slap it on don't worry too much about it um, over the black the whole thing covered okay I'm just gonna actually that's dried so quickly I can actually do the base as well because um that's fine you can put underglazes onto your bases of your pots and it's not like glaze um, well hmm, it depends what temperature you're going to fire it to but generally you can put underglazes on the bases and they're fine so I've just slapped that on can you see so that's gone really really quickly on there okay so that's herb green and what's this one forget me not blue I'm going to pop that on top because I just want it to be bluey greeny with black underneath Let's see, let's see what happens. So I quite like these like really big um, mop brushes <clears throat> for applying underglaze and stuff, because they seem to hold loads of 
liquid, you know, and you can just slap it on and um, they're less likely to be sort of streaky, I think. Anyway, it doesn't really matter what brush, just get it on the surface, you know. Okay, so I'm just banging that on top, like so, all over. It doesn't even matter if there's little gaps, it doesn't have to be perfect because, you know, you want it to have a broken effect later, um, you know, and look a little bit older than it really is. I did do another video with them. Um, oh, hello, Bertie. My little dog has just come to, come to say hello. Are you a good boy? Are you a good boy? Yes. Oh, lovely thing. Hello. Oh, hello. He's very cute. I'm not gonna, no, you can't come up now. Anyway, can you hear that? <laughs> he's doing his good boy city. He thinks um, he's got his paws on me like that. I think he thinks there's an S-N-A-C-K coming his way, but there isn't. So you're just gonna have to pipe down, I'm afraid. Right, I'm gonna do um, a layer of white now on the very top, just a really quick, no, don't do that, Bertie, that's enough now. Right. So I'm just going to slap on a bit of white as the top layer. So you've layered up, like you can do two layers, you could do three layers. I mean, you can do as many layers as you want. I tend to find that um, that three layers kind of works quite well. It's not too much um, because what I'm aiming for, you see, when I'm doing the sponging in a sec, is that I want to kind of see um, all, the, um, all the different colours Okay, so I'm just going to give that a quick, quick blast off with my hot air gun, just to try it off a little bit so I can um, handle it a little bit better. Because now I've applied three layers of moisture, obviously that's absorbed into the surface and it's made it, you know, quite damp. I don't have to dry it, but... There were just some thicker areas that were a bit, that were a bit wetter, more wet, wetter. Right, so I've got my um, bucket of water here and my sponge. Right, clean water, clean sponge is the secret, okay? And what I tend to do when I'm wiping back um, is I think about like, I want it to sort of look like fake old a bit. I mean, I know it isn't, but you know. So I kind of think about like, first of all, I try and sort of articulate the form a little bit by just doing like the edges. Can you see? So I'm just taking that back. Yeah, so I'm squeezing out my sponge every time and I'm just going around that bottom edge. Percy's just squeezed between my legs. <laughs> oh God, he's funny. He's keeping me warm though, so that's nice. <laughs> so can you see, I'm just going around that bottom edge. And what the, the good thing is as well, is that when you um, are doing the sponging, so I keep rinsing out my sponge. So you want a clean sponge, every wipe really. Otherwise what happens is, um, is you'll just smear all the colors in together. So then I'm just gonna do a little bit on the base. Okay, so can you see what's happening? We're getting down to the green color and I wanna get down to a bit of the dark. Okay, getting there. I just want it to sort of like look a bit, oh yeah, that's nice. Okay, so I'm not gonna do much more than that. Can you see? Okay, so I've articulated the form around the base, given it a bit of age and a bit of wear on its base. So I'm gonna do the sides now. Well, actually, I think I'm, I just wanna go around all the little bits that, the actual linear marks, you know, like the rim around the base, all those areas that will help articulate your form and really show off the form. So I'm also gonna do around this edge in here and just make sure that I'm getting right down to the black. And the more layers, obviously, um, the more sponging you have gotta do. So I'm just taking that back around there. I'll just show you. So, and also when you're sponging, like it will actually come out exactly like it looks when it's wet. Can you see that? So I've just gone around those both, both those edges. So now um, I might as well do in here, I guess. So I'm just taking off a bit of the white, squeezing out my sponge, 
And I kind of want a bit of the white to show. So look, second swipe, I'm getting down to the black and the green. I'm just gonna take off a little bit more. I want it to look a little bit more aged and worn in the, in the middle bit, you know, as if it's had lots of things inside it. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna leave it like that in the middle. Can you see? So I've got a bit of the white, a bit of the green, a bit of the blue, and that black, you know? So I'm gonna do the top edge now. So I'm just thinking about, you know, well, I'm just visually assessing it as I go, basically, um, because what's nice is it, it kind of shows up a lot of the tool marks as well. So any kind of texture will be really beautifully articulated and, and revealed um, through using this technique. Okay, so I'm not gonna do too much. I, can't, I don't want, oh, that's my phone. I don't want it to be too sort of busy. I want the subtleties of the colour. So I'm gonna leave the top like that. So it's just quite nicely sort of worn. I have to say, it looks a lot, lot nicer in real life. I can see that you can't really see what I'm seeing. So now I'm just gonna do around the sides. Okay, I'm just trying to show you each swipe. <laughs> and if you really wanna get down to the black, like you do need to sort of like rinse out your sponge really frequently. Okay, so I'm just kind of, go around that top edge a little bit just get a little bit more black showing in some places that corresponds with the kind of aged bit on the top and I do want quite a lot of that white showing as well so it becomes you know, like much more painterly almost like a landscape and I want a bit of that green showing like I think that's kind of enough Let's see if I can just bring it up to the, I hope you can see, it really isn't showing it off very well, but you know, I'm really happy with this sort of nice aged effect that you can see. I might do a little bit more around the top here and maybe a little bit more around the base. Um, so you just keep going until it's right, you know? How am I doing for time? Oh yeah, nearly there. So that's kind of it really. Um, and that's it, we're done. So you just get, it's so easy to get like a really, really nice aged, um, like worn sort of effect that shows the different layers of the underglazes. I mean, God, that's pretty, pretty simple and pretty easy. So you could just fire it like this now and have it like matte, all right? So the colours would darken a little bit and brighten a little bit, but they wouldn't be shiny unless you put a transparent glaze on top right now, um, which I think I will do. Um, or at least I might actually just glaze like the, I don't know, I, might, I quite like the combination of matte and glaze. So, you know, both shiny and matte um, is a bit of a winner, I think. So I may just glaze maybe just the inside bit, you know? I'm not sure yet, I'll have a think about that. But, you know, tr layer up your underglazes. Try with three colours. And what I tend to do is go from dark to light. That seems to work. There are no rules. You can try, you can try whatever you like, you know. But there's something nice, I think, about, about kind of the depth of, of colour that you get when you go from dark to light. So the dark is kind of showing through the, the paler colours. Um, that does tend to be a consistently good way of doing it okay it for me anyway but you know as I say just like bung on any old combination and see how you go with it um so yeah give it a go um and thank you everyone for liking and subscribing and I can't believe how many of you have have subscribed to my channel I mean it's nuts it's totally nuts I don't understand but thank you yeah I don't even know what it all means but I don't know, it's just lovely and you all send me nice messages and things and I just, oh God, it's so weird. But here we are, this is what we're doing. And um, happy Christmas and happy potting. <laughs> I'll see you in 2021. Woo, <laughs> bye.